I, I want to talk to you today from an old sermon, uh, but I, I love its content because it is so encouraging. And I think we're living in a day and time when people need to be encouraged about your own situation. I, I don't know your situation, but I do know you could use some encouragement. So I want you to go with me to the book of 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, and I'm going to use as, as my uh, scripture text uh, the 41st verse. 1 Kings 18, 41 reads as follows, and Elijah uh -huh. Uh -huh. said unto Ahab, yes, right. get up, yeah. Yeah. eat, and drink. In other words, get the party started. Yeah. For there is a sound. of abundance of rain. Huh? Praise the Lord. I hear a sound. Hmm? Some of us are at the age till we can feel rain coming. <laughs> I used to hear my dad say, boy, I feel like it's going to rain. And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Amen. I hear the sound. Huh? I want to talk about how to make it rain. Yeah, how to make it rain. Who's at the temptations saying, I wish it would rain? You all remember that? Yeah, you do. Don't sit there and look at me like that. Sunshine, blue sky. Please go away. My girl has found another, and she's gone away. With her win my future. <laughs> oh, boy, when that song came out, I was driving a convertible Oldsmobile, and I would ride down the streets of Detroit with my top down. My big hat on. <laughs> I wish it would rain. Oh, David Ruffin was a bad fella, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. But all of us, there is a time, and there will be a time in your life where you wish it would rain. Because rain, especially here in the Bible, was symbolic of a harvest. It was symbolic of growth. Huh? It was symbolic of a blessing. And these people here who needed rain had gone without rain for three years. <laughs> the, the prophet Elijah had received word from God. God told him, go tell my disobedient people that I'm getting ready to close up heaven. Tell them there won't be any rain for a number of years. And he said, not even do. Boy, God knows how to shut your water off, don't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he shut it off. And there was a famine in the land. Cattle began to die in the fields. Crops began to wither away. There was no rain. There was no, there was, there was, there was no produce. There was no success. There was no food. There was no water. 
Praise God. Because there was no rain. And speaking of that, I, I talked to uh, Brenda Floyd, Bishop Floyd's wife. I think it was Tuesday up in Flint. I was talking to her about the, the water supply up there. that uh, uh, Got the kids drinking water with lead in it and all of that. So we're praying for them. But there was a dryness and blight covered the land. Because heaven's windows were closed. Praise the Lord. How many have ever felt like heaven closed up on you? I have. When, when nothing happened. Huh? Okay, I'm the only one. Couldn't no money go out? There wasn't no money coming in. Bills went unpaid. They cut my, cut, I had my lights cut off in Detroit. Of course, five minutes later, I went out and cut them back off. <laughs> when I paid the bill, the electric man knocked on my door. He said, your lights are on. I said, "Is." indeed. You can't do that no more. They cut them off in downtown. But um, so I've been through it. I've been through it. I've been through it. I've been through it. No rain. And I would pray, Lord, let it rain. Huh? Give me some rain. Give me, give me some food. Production, give me, give me something. I need growth, huh? My finances need growth, huh? Some of us, our finance needs growth. Praise the Lord. Our children need educational growth, huh? Wish it would rain. I, and I, I want to show you how to make it rain. And some of us have gone a long time. A long time without rain. You, you, you sold yourself weeping. Yeah, weeping may endure for a night. But Lord, how long is this night? Wish it would rain. Wish it. I wish, I wish, I wish, I, I wish I could, I could just see something. Huh? Some of us put it in, in, in the words, I, I wish I could just see the light at the end of the tunnel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I, I used to hear somebody sing a song, and it was an old quartet in the church used to sing a song. I've been down so long till up don't bother me. I said, I ain't never been that down. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Somebody look at me right now. You've been down a long time. You've been struggling a long time. You've been going through a long time. You've been dealing with it a long time. Good news, you're in the right place at the right time. I'm going to show you how to get through it. I'm going to show you how to put an end to your drought. And the number one thing that it takes, it takes real faith in God. I'm not talking about word faith. I'm talking about showing up faith. Not word faith, working faith. Because the Bible said faith without works. Faith without practice. Do you know you have to practice your faith? 
You heard that saying, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. How do you get good faith? Practice, practice, practice. When you're sick, practice it. Lord, heal me. Heal me. Heal me. Don't have to call your prayer partner. Because I found out can't nobody pray for me like me. Don't nobody care for me like me. Don't nobody feel me like me. Don't nobody know what I'm going through like me. Practice faith. Practice faith. Quit talking down all the time. When, 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 you, when you go to the ATM and, and, and reach for your balance and, and you got a negative balance, instead of saying, I don't know what I'm going to do, just say, well, the Lord will make a way. <laughs> try it. If you don't believe it works, try it. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. These people needed faith. They needed faith in God. Let me tell you what had happened. They had began, you know, there was a woman uh, among them by the name of Jezebel. The old folks used to call her Jezebel. And she had turned a bunch of God's people to worshiping an idol God named Baal. And God got angry. And you don't want to make God angry. Who was that, the hawk that used to say, you don't want to make me angry. You don't want to see me get angry. Huh? You don't want to make God angry. Because God knows how to shut your water off. Huh? He ain't got to knock you down with sickness. Huh? He ain't got to smite you lame. He just turn your water off. And look at you and say, now. Nah. Huh? See how long before you be out here on Wednesday night. So God shut their water off. But let me show you. It was for three years. For three years. It was dry. Bone dry. But after three years. Oh, praise. Him. That's why I love God. His mercy. Began to flow. God looked at his people and said, all right, it's enough. It's enough. I want to turn that water back on. And he called his prophet. He said, go tell him. Tell my people I'm getting ready to turn the water back on. But there's one stipulation. Elijah, I want you to take him up to Mount Carmel. And up there on Mount Carmel, I want you to show them that I am God. I am God. Everybody in here who knows God knows you had to climb up Mount Carmel. There was a Mount Carmel in your life. Yeah, there was. There, yeah, there was. I'm talking about if you sure enough came to him. There was a time in your life when you couldn't turn anywhere else but to God. I know I went for years and years off of mama and daddy's pronunciation. I went for years and years off of their faith. One day my dad died. The brook dried up. Huh? You hear me? It stopped raining. It stopped raining. Anybody know anything about that? And I fell on my knees. I got so dry. Everything around me was dry. Couldn't drive my car because my brakes were out and I didn't have enough money to get them fixed. Huh? Boy. And I remember, I, I was still a boy. I was still, in, I was still around 18 or 19 years old. And I remember, good God, 
I went to church down at 795 MacDougall Street in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. My brother, C.L., was the pastor. And I'll never forget, we had an altar call, and I went down there, and I fell on my knees. Huh? I fell on my knees. And I began to call on the Lord. I said, Lord, I ain't got nowhere else to turn. Huh? Nowhere else to turn. And I need you, I need you, I need you. And you know that next week things start happening in my life. And that was when I began to look. I said, this ain't nobody but God. Huh? This ain't nobody but God. And from that point on, my faith has grew and grown and grown and grown. More faith, more faith, more faith. When we were in Decatur High School, faith, faith, faith. Hallelujah. Mount Carmel. Praise the Lord. Everybody here knows where they first met the Lord. And I ain't talking about mom and daddy's God. I'm talking about your God. You know. Maybe your wife left you. Maybe your husband left you. Maybe your children got locked up. Everybody in here has a Mount Carmel. Hallelujah. Elijah met him up there and met the prophets of Baal, the other, the other God. They were up there too. And Elijah told him, listen, here's how we're going to settle this. The God that answers, they, they built an, two altars. They had Baal's altar, God's altar. Baal's altar had wood on it, God's altar had wood. Baal's altar had a, had a lamb on it, a sheep on it, God's altar had a sheep on it. And Elijah said, now, nah, we ain't got no matches. Huh? Ain't no lighters around here. Ain't gonna be no rubbing no sticks together. But the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And Baal, the Bible says, the Bible tells us that Baal's people, hallelujah, began to pray. And they, they, they started, in, in the 26th verse, they started calling on Baal. They called, they, they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning till night or till noon, saying, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, oh, Baal. But there was no voice. Huh? Yeah. Nor any that answered. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they began to leap and jump on the altar. Yeah. Give us fire. Send the fire, Baal. Yeah. Fire was representative of power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Fire is powerful. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Fire make you run when ain't nobody behind you. Fire make you cry when ain't nobody bothering you. Huh? I remember my mama didn't have to tell me but one time. She'd been telling me, don't touch that stove, it's hot. Huh? And one time she turned her back and I touched it. I said, ah! From then on, I would have knocked hot. Hot. Fire make you hot. <laughs> Fire is powerful. And God did not answer Baal's prayer. And then Elijah said, here's what I want y'all to do. And I want y'all to listen to this. I ain't going to be much longer. I know y'all think I'm stretched out. I want you to listen to this. Elijah, when it, became, when it was Elijah's turn, Elijah told them this. He said, look, I want you to get me, uh, I, I, I want everybody to throw and go, go to uh, verse 29. Yeah, here, verse 30. He, he told him, he said, I want you all to put, bring me some water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Bring me some water. I think that's the 36th verse. <coughs> or, th or verse 33, I'm sorry. He said, bring me some water. And he, Elijah put wood in order 
and cut the bullock in pieces in pieces and laid him on the wood and, and said, fill four barrels of water, pour it on the, the offering, do it again, do it again, do it again three times. In other words, that was a total of 12 barrels of water poured on an altar that he wanted God to light. And you know water is no friend of fire. <laughs> but here's what I want you to see the significance in that. In this famine, hallelujah. And y'all may not get this. It may take you a minute. In a famine, what is most needed is water. Huh? So God was telling them, if you need water, pour water on your sacrifice. Huh? If you want to make it rain, pour water on the sacrifice. If you... <laughs> yeah, y'all sitting there. What are you talking about? If you need money, give God some money. Pour money on his sacrifice. If you need a job, give God more time. Whatever you need the most, put it on the altar. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you need the most, put it on the altar. The Bible says, hallelujah, that the water ran around and about the altar and filled the trench with water. Go on, go on. And it came to pass at the time of the offering, hallelujah, of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near. And he said, let me show you all how to pray. Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, the fire began to fall and lapped up the water around the altar. Lapped water that was on the altar and the wood began to burn and the sacrifice began to burn and the people who were worshiping Gail the people who believed in Baal began to cry out the Lord he is God why don't you cry out today the Lord he is God one more time of rain I came by to tell you you may not see a writ right now you may not see a kind of right now but you don't have to wait till it starts raining you can party right now you can shout right now tell your neighbor neighbor ready to shout right now help is on the way deliverance is on the way hope is on the way right now right now right now join us
Mondays for one of our spirit fill services. We're located at 923 Valley Brook Road in Decatur, Georgia. For directions or more information, contact us at 404-508-1400. God bless you. We are delighted that you have joined us in this weekly telecast from the New Beginning Full Gospel Baptist Church. Until this same time next week, this is Bishop Morton saying we love you so much. You go with God. <laughs>